Hi guys, welcome back to episode 5 of Remaking the Simpsons Hit and Run. In this episode, we're going to address a really big problem, and that has been the graphics. Whenever I've released an episode, I put so much work in, and then most of the comments are just saying like, the game looks bad, the exposure is too high, the game looks too realistic. There was always something wrong with the graphics. But I do understand those comments because, you know, if you're going to remake a game that is a cult classic like The Simpsons Hit and Run, you have to make it look good. Otherwise, what would be the point of remaking it? I was at a loss. I didn't know what to do. And then I stumbled upon an artist that goes by the name of Cory Long. She's not a programmer, but her art is incredible. And I'm a programmer, but my art is horrible. So it made sense to team up. Um, but the issue was Cory Lon didn't speak any English. But over the past month, we have been painstakingly collaborating with the use of a translator. But we have worked through all of the challenges and the result is incredible. I always want to blow you guys away with these videos and I think in this episode we're going to make that happen. So welcome to episode 5 and let's show you some of the brand new art that we have in the game now. Let's start with the most obvious change which is the textures. Look at this footpath, look at this grass and the road here. These are just so gross. They're super pixelated and we did upscale them but they still did not look the best. This is the biggest improvement, so I thought I'd show you this right off the bat. Alright, so have a look at these new textures that we have in the game now. We have a new road texture, new footpaths, and grass. And the biggest improvement is just how much sharper the textures are. They're all HD. These are not upscaled. These are completely remade from scratch. So they just look incredible compared to the originals. I really like how the grass tiles onto the sidewalk like that really really nice next up i want to show you guys some of the props so here is the old street lamp in the game and the old fire hydrant we did remake these but they still weren't quite where we wanted them to be and so we have a new street lamp and fire hydrant that are much more consistent with the simpsons style because they're hand painted and just a lot more cartoony and i absolutely love these i think corylon has done a really really nice job with these. Also one of the coolest changes is we have this new skybox now as well and I actually added a little bit of code to the skybox and what it does is it slowly rotates the skybox. So you'll notice that the clouds are just very slowly moving across the sky as well. Next up I want to talk about this fence here. Super gross, super pixelated. Corylon has replaced it with a very basic 3D fence, however I think it works because basic is not necessarily bad as long as everything's HD and nice and sharp and high quality. And over on this side of the house we have a brand new brick fence with high quality HD textures on it so really nice looking as well. Next up the biggest change, the Simpsons house has been entirely remade from scratch. Here's the old one, you can see it's pretty blocky, not very detailed. Of course the game was made in 2003 so there wasn't a lot of room to add a lot of detail and I want to show you what Cory Lon's done here. So a lot of it is still very flat but the detail has been added where it matters. You can see like the garage door for example is super super high quality now. The uh, texture on the windows is made to look like the curtains are drawn. Uh, people seem pretty polarized on this. Some people really love the curtains being drawn, some people hate it. I quite like it. And then also I love how Cory Lon's added little splashes of detail, like this chimney has the bricks sticking out of it. I think it's super nice. Uh, even on the back here, some of these windows, just a lot higher quality detail. And so the entire house has been remade. Some of the props and stuff around the back are missing. The roof of the Simpsons house also now has a brand new texture on it and even though the Flanders house hasn't been remade yet I did just put the roof texture on that house as well just to get it looking a little bit nicer. Next up one of the most disgusting looking models in the original game was this hedge. I do not care for this hedge at all. Obviously this is 2003 so they didn't have a lot of computing power to spare for the hedges. And now Corylon has remade them. I think this is just awesome. I love these new hedges and I love that she's added these uh, stone columns to the end as well. I don't have anything bad to say about Corylon's art because I just think she's nailed it. You can see just how pixelated and grainy and bad the phone booth looked. And now of course here in the new project, look how good this phone booth looked. I know Billy did remake the phone booths in uh, another episode, but I'm sorry Billy, I have to go with these. These are just so... 
They're so good, aren't they? Like, they're so good. The cartoon styling, I just love. Next up, we have the coin. So this is the coin from the old game. And then we have Corylon's new coin. And I'm showing you all of this because even this coin would have taken like three hours to make. None of this is easy stuff. And I still have the old Buzz Cola card. So let's get the new one in the game as well. Let's have a look at that. Oh, that is so much sharper. Wow. Way more crisp. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go watch Breaking Bad because I'm pretty burnt out today. And I'll see you tomorrow. Jesse. Jesse, we need to cook. Uh, yeah, okay, Mr. White. I haven't been entirely truthful here. Uh, Corylon has actually made a lot more art. You can see she's done this entire stretch of road to, And she's also remade another entire building. Not just the Simpsons house. But before I show you that, I'm going to put a dialogue system in the game. I think we should try and remake the first dialogue you ever have with Marge. And just test getting a dialogue system running in the game. And then I'll close out the video by showing you guys the rest of what Cory Lon's done. I'm just going to make a dialogue called Marge. This is actually my narrative quest and dialogue tool, by the way. I will link it in the description. I really think it's a great tool. So we're going to make a dialogue with two speakers in it, right? We've got Marge as one of our speakers, and then Homer as the other person in this dialogue. And it starts by uh, Marge saying, Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Uh, to which Homer says, so let's add a line for Homer. Homer says, uh, it must have been one of our kids, probably Millhouse. All right, so we're going to run up to Marge and interact with her and let's see if this works. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Oh, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. That is so awesome. Let's see if we can refine it a bit further. Um, I would love to have it so that a cinematic camera, you know, views the, the character while they talk. So uh, let's try and do that. One of the things that I'm really proud of with my narrative tool is how customizable it is. So here Marge and Homer are having a conversation and I want to have the camera actually point at whoever is speaking, right? And so I just go into the event graph and I just add a little bit of code. I'm going to spawn in a camera and then I'm going to point the camera at whoever is talking. And that's pretty much it. So let's try it out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try it out. We'll walk up to Marge and talk to her. Awesome. I'm super happy with that. Uh, but we still need the characters to open their mouths when they talk. I think what I might do, like, just for now, is I'm not even going to sync the characters' mouths to the audio. I'm just going to do what the original game is, which is just make the mouth go like this while they talk. And I think it's going to be convincing enough. I guess we'll try it. See if it works. Okay, so I tried doing that, and it looked terrible. Flapping the mouth open and closed at a constant speed... Uh, is not good. <laughs> oh, good God. Will anything just work? So I've changed it so that the mouth open and closing actually follows the audio now. So this should look a lot better. And Homer also plays his head scratch animation uh, while he talks. So let's check it out. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Well, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. Looks pretty good. Although I don't know what Homer was doing with his legs. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. He was doing the Homer shuffle. That's his favorite dance move. You ever seen a man jump over a kid before? Do you wanna? <laughs> I actually thought that was gonna work. You can't jump over him. Ah. Double jump. There we go. All right, before I show you the new art, let's quickly get the main menu in the game as well. I'm doing the main menu now, so Corylon has sent over the art, so it's time to texture everything. Okay, so this is all textured now, but it still can definitely use some improvements, so... I need to go and do like some lighting and just try a bunch of stuff out to get the scene looking as nice as it can. Alright, so thanks to Sam, we have exported Homer from the level. 
And then I also added a light to the TV. If we use a sine wave and then hook the intensity of the sine wave up to the intensity of the light, basically we then have a light that goes up and down, right, in its intensity. And you can see that it nicely pulses to the intensity of that sine wave, which is pretty cool. So uh, a little bit more progress on the main menu, but it's still very, very basic. The buttons don't do anything yet. Uh, we did export Homer from the original game. He's looking very beautiful and glorious and majestic on the couch there. So the next thing to add is the selectable options. So let's do that. I think a lot of people think that I just like click some buttons and the engine does it for me. It's not necessarily the case at all. It's about drive. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. Foot in the work. Foot in the hours. And take what's ours. All right. That seems to be working well. I think I might make the text a little bit smaller, but it works. So nice. Not much to the main menu at the moment. Uh, it'll just throw you into the game. I did add a loading screen. So there's that. All right. I think it's time to show you guys the brand new Quickie Mart. Let's go ahead and get in there. The interior is not done yet, but it will be a open shop. You'll be able to just walk right in, no loading screens or anything like that. I've rigged up the doors to open. And of course the rooftop garden is available to access still, if I can get up there. <laughs> there we go. And uh, Coriolan's just done an incredible job here um, with the, the details, keeping that hand painted art style. I just think this is awesome. And if we come around the side here, you can see we have some more details, Albato graffiti on the side and stuff. It's really cool to see the art completely redone. You know, it's one thing to upscale, like look at this Loud Lad Donuts billboard. I upscaled this, but you can tell that this is not remade entirely. If you look at the Quickie Mart, you can see just a sharpness, that high resolution. You just cannot fake that. What is going on over here, guys? All it takes is like one flipped car. <laughs> you can't keep getting away with it! What the hell, dude? All right, that seems to have uh, corrected the traffic jam. So what I wanted to show you before we close this video out is the other uh, road that Corylon redid. So this road here has been redone. Uh, the brick wall, um, and then uh, this road actually goes on for quite a while and she's redone quite a lot of the art to make this work. She has to redo all of the lawns. You can see this wall here is new. These houses are still not redone yet, uh, but Corylon is pretty close to having these done and they will probably be in the next video. I've seen a little bit of the work she's done so far on these houses and it's really, really incredible. So, um, there's a lot to be excited for in the next episode. <gasps> Yes! Yes! I don't know how I did that. Oh! Alright, let's go. Yeah, so I need to put the collector's card up here because I'm pretty sure in the Marge level, I think it is, you can climb on top of this and then I think there's a collector's card up here. Oh, you know what? Look how bad this water looks. Let's fix this water. So free on the marketplace this month was a cartoon water pack. So I'm just going to delete this old water and we're going to take the new cartoon water and we're just going to throw it in here. All right, so this more cartoony water, I think because we've moved over to a cartoony style with Corylon's new art, I think this actually works pretty damn nicely. Definitely, definitely an upgrade. Oh, my dog. My dog, that is looking very nice. Woo! Shit, this water. Yo, come check out how blue this water is. I've never even seen that shade of blue before. Wouldn't it be cool to have like a waterfall coming out of the side of the uh, of the dam? Like it's broken and the water is spilling out. Like maybe I can scale it to look a little bit less dumb. That's kind of dope. Let's let's leave it. I, I'm liking the waterfall, man. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this lovely new art that we have in the game. It's only up from here because all the rest of the episodes are going to be exactly like this. Tons of cool new art to show you guys. I think I'm just going to remake a few of the missions. I'm not going to try and literally remake the entire game. I think we're on track to finish remaking this game by like episode 10 and then I can dip out of here and I can remake Lego Island. Alright, see you. Bye.